And so we kick off the 2020 KZN Equip with two speakers from different parts of the globe. Joseph Fa'au down in Auckland, New Zealand, and Chris Smith from Denver, Colorado. They're speaking about a similar subject. And so by way of introduction, what I'd like to do is tell you the story of Nicholas Ntembu. Nicholas, 58 years old, a bricklayer for many, many years, has been a builder, a construction worker in a local church here in KZN. He, he worked for a church, but he never went to church meetings. He wasn't a believer in Jesus. His wife was, but he wasn't. Anyway, one day his wife uh, got quite sick and wound up in hospital, and some Christians went to pray for her. Well, she walked out of that hospital miraculously, and, and Nicholas decided, well, I better go and find out about the God that she serves. Cut a long story short, about 18 months ago, he got saved at the age of 57. A few months later, he got baptized. I remember being sent the video footage of his baptism. As he came out of this water, this distinguished man punched the air. It was like with this victory salute that he had, he had walked into the kingdom of God. Well, fast forward another year and lockdown hits and, and Nicholas went home but was drawing a full salary staying at home in lockdown like everybody else. He said to his wife, it's just not right. It's not right that God pays me a salary and I don't work for the Lord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a building on my brother-in-law's plot of land. And so he built a church during lockdown with his own salary. Didn't draw any of it for himself. He built this building. He fitted it with chairs. He put a little secondhand sound system in there. And then he built a children's ministry next door. When we were allowed to go to 50 people per meeting, he said to his wife, well, we've got this building that we built for the Lord now. We should maybe invite our neighbors. And so he invited his neighbors, and, and guess what? But they all came. And so he has meetings now on the weekend with over 100 people, children and adults. He had a men's meeting the other day with 45 men at it. Now remember, this is a man who's only been saved about 18 months, totally unchurched. So he, he hardly knows the difference between Abraham and Adam. And yet God's chosen to use him. He's been born again into an environment where it's natural to lead, natural to do what God has called him to do. And so God's taken this, this man who, who has got zero church history, and he's used him to plant a church. I, I know that I've heard one of the speakers who's going to speak uh, shortly use this phrase, God uses crooked sticks to draw straight lines. Another way of saying that is God can take anybody and he can use them to lead and to uh, plant churches and to do great things for him. And so first we can listen to Chris Smith. His role in our tribe, NCMI, is he's the communication guru. He's in the guy who puts the website together and the right-hand man for Tyron Daniel out there in Denver. But he's planted a church before and, and has uh, been an elder for a number of years now. Joseph Fa'al from New Zealand leads a great church down there. He's got six sons. So I think next time we hear from the Fa'als, we hear from, from his wife. And uh, you'll see that the the, the video quality is not so great from down in New Zealand with a wind howling in the background, but we've decided to play that video anyway just because of his sheer enthusiasm, his testimony, and what he's carrying in his heart. So uh, sit back and uh, listen to what God wants to tell us through these two uh, great, great men at different parts of the world. Hi, everybody at the KZN Equip, or as we'd say in the States, the KZN um, this, my name's Chris, and I'm in Denver, Colorado, part of the U.S., and uh, part of the NCMI team. One of the guys asked me just to reach out and kind of share what was on my heart for you guys. First of all, we're absolutely delighted that you guys are stepping out and doing this equip. You are the first coming out of the pandemic, and uh, we're just excited for what God's going to do through it. We believe it's going to open the door for so many more things. And uh, as I was praying for the time, the word that God gave to me, was overcomers. And the picture that he began to show me was, was Joshua and Caleb. It's very familiar to all of us. As we know, Moses sent out the 12, and uh, out of the 12, 10 came back saying, carrying the fruit that God promised, they came back still saying, 
but there are giants in the land that's too much. We won't be able to do it. While Joshua and Caleb had their eyes not on the giants, but on the God that had provided his promise. And I just feel like for you and in your region, what you've been doing and what is God, what God has called you to is to continue to see the promises and the one that gave those promises instead of worrying about the giants. I believe you've already been doing that. We've seen some of it even on your social media as you have continued to, to walk in God's promises. Let the giants be them, but the God we serve is much bigger than any giant will ever face. And uh, as I just, just felt some of the things to share with you for this time, for this equip, but also for the season that's ahead, this thing of being an overcomer, uh, Acts 4 really to me stands out as the way the church should be. And I believe for you in your region are called to be. And uh, in Acts 4, as we know, Peter and John, they go to pray. And on their way to prayer, they see a man who's uh, paralyzed, been a paralytic his entire life. And, uh, you know, he asks them for money and they say, silver and gold we don't have. But what we do have, we give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up, take up your mat and walk. And after doing so in the demonstration of God's miraculous power, the religious people get upset. And so they call Peter and John in and they question them. And what comes out of the time with them to me is what stands out for this season, for you, for us, for God's church. And the first thing in it is we need to be those who stand firm. Stand firm in declaring the name of Jesus Christ. Because the one thing that they told Peter and John to do, basically they can do anything else, teach in any other name, but do not teach in the name of Jesus. And my friends, I want to encourage us. We must stand for the name of Jesus above all else. To be honest, we could cancel meetings, we could cancel connect groups, we could cancel all the church things as long as we continue to preach in the one name that saves. That's the name of Jesus Christ. The second thing out of that is Peter and John were seen as two ordinary, unschooled men, but it was clear they had been with Jesus. And I want to encourage us as leaders and encourage those of you who are aspiring leaders. This is the season for everyone to be equipped and everyone to be prepared. This is not a season to go back to the faithful few doing all the work and everyone else attending. This is the season for us to rise up out of this pandemic and see the church on fire. All of us being equipped, all of us being sent, all of us giving ourselves to what God has called us to. So leaders, prepare the others. Others, let yourselves be prepared. Let's be the priesthood we're called to be. The third thing in it is, uh, Peter and John said, God, in their prayer, God, you knew this was going to happen. And we need to understand that God's always in control. The pandemic did not catch God by surprise. All the chaos has not caught God by surprise. He doesn't delight in suffering, but he does give us these opportunities to clear away all the rest of the things and get our eyes back on him. So if remember, my friends, no matter what we face, no matter what lay ahead, our God is with us, he's for us, and he has it all in his hand. Fourth thing in there is just as adversity comes, when these Two uh, disciples and the people they were with were confronted with what the religious leaders said. Don't preach in the name of Jesus. They threatened them. What these disciples did was not cower away. Instead, they prayed. They sought the face of God. And they didn't pray normal prayers. And I don't know that prayers should ever be normal in our sense. But they prayed extraordinary prayers. And I want to encourage you and I in this season, pray but pray for supernatural things, extraordinary things. Pray for signs and wonders. Pray for miracles. Pray for salvations. Pray for doors to open to nations we've never been to because the God we serve is in control. And what we need to do when adversity comes is press into him all the more and believe for greater things. The num number five in here, as the disciples prayed, they got together and they said, Lord, help us to be bold. Help us to boldly declare the gospel. Friends, we need to be bold in this season, but not bold about church, not bold about meetings, not bold about ourselves. To be honest, not even bold about NCMI, but bold about this gospel, about this Jesus we serve. We have been given the remedy for the world. The world's in chaos. Certainly in the United States, you know, there's a lot of chaotic things happening here we've never faced before. But to me, that makes the gospel stand out all the more as the one true foundation for all things that truly matter. So be bold, be courageous with the gospel. Go to those neighbors that have said no. Go to those communities that have been shut off to you for. Reach those regions that seem like, how can we ever get in there? We can get in there because we serve the God of the impossible. Be bold and courageous. And the last thing in here, and they ask this in their prayer, is Holy Spirit, move your mighty hand, move in power. Friends, expect the supernatural. 
Don't expect to go back to the ordinary. Don't expect to do church and just do things the way we do them. But expect the super outside of the natural realm because the God we serve is absolutely supernatural. The spirit of God within us that raised Jesus from the dead wants to move as we preach the gospel. So pray for these things. But more than that, walk in these things. Believe for all that God wants to do as we preach, as we're bold, as we're courageous, as we raise up a priesthood. Let us do so by the power of God with us to declare and to to put that stamp of approval, this is of God. And we read at the end of that time, from that place, the power of God was displayed. The gospel was preached with boldness and the place where they met shook as a confirmation that God was with them. And for those of you at KZN, those of you in that region, those of you who are watching this throughout South Africa, be encouraged. This is the season, one of the greatest seasons, certainly in our lifetime, to be able to go and take this gospel to the ends of the earth. Be encouraged, be equipped, rise up, We stand together. We look forward to what's ahead. God bless your time. Amen. Hi, everyone. This is Joseph Afiu. I'm the lead pastor for a church in Auckland, New Zealand called Navigators. That's right. My wife and I, Lydia, have been leading this church for the last five years. And we are previously on eldership of another church for the last 12 years. So we've been in leadership for about 17 to 18 years now. And it's been an honor and a privilege to do so. We have six amazing sons. That's right. Six amazing sons. And we are, our, our quiver is full. And I just want you to hold on to that thought because we're going to get into the message soon and and, uh, the quiver is going to be important for this message. But it's a privilege to be able to share at uh, KZN Equip 2020. Uh, It's a real honor to do this all the way from Auckland, New Zealand, uh, right there to you, wherever you may be, whatever site or whatever building you may be in. I pray that you are equipped, encouraged, and enlarged as you go out empowered to take the Word of God to the streets and to the country and to wherever God sends you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of sharing your word today, and we pray that, Lord, that you'll fashion us with that word, the powerful word of God. And we thank you, we honor you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, uh, today I want to share a word that I pray that will be encouraging to you. If you've got your Bibles with you, I want you to open your Bibles to Psalm 127. And it says this, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritance, inheritance or heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. They are not put to shame when they contend with those opponents in the court. I love this, and as a father of six boys, I I use this a lot. And I think it's important for us as leaders, as people come into our lives, we got to look them as spiritual sons or daughters and see them reach their full potential in God. You know, I've heard the saying that you don't succeed as a leader unless the people you lead succeed. It's a beautiful statement, it's a beautiful quote, but do we live it out? We're leaders, we're leaders that don't lead for power, but we're leaders that lead to empower. So my message to you from this text is that are we are we those leaders who are equipping those who God has brought into our sphere of influence? Because it's important that we need to be in this next season releasing arrows. And that's what the message is today. It's about releasing arrows. And I pray that you'll be encouraged and empowered by this for the next season so you can start releasing the arrows that God has brought into your spiritual quiver to actually send out into the world that's waiting for them. Today, we see that the text of that, that scripture and we know that God is building His church. We know He's watching over the city, but also He wants us to leave a legacy. And this is what leadership is about. It's about leading, leaving a legacy for others to follow on from. Being the shoulders that people can stand on and years to come. And so it's important as leaders that we become consistent in this. You know, a few years ago, uh, my, uh, my son came to us and he was really... He was, he was amazed by uh, Robin Hood, this, uh, this old program that we saw, and he came to us and he started making a, 
a bow and arrow in the backyard. And as he was making it, I thought to myself, this guy is really intentional about learning about uh, archery. And I thought to myself, I spoke to my wife and we spoke about it. And we said, let's, let's put him in an archery school. And that's what we did. We saw the passion that was there. And we took that and actually put him in an environment where he can flourish. And that's what God does with us. He, he takes the potential and he puts it in an environment where he can flourish. And that's the beauty of the local church. He takes a God potential and puts it into a God purpose so you can flourish. And it's important to understand from the story that my son came and he, and he took on archery. He became very good at it. And um, this is one of his uh, arrows that we have. But one of the important lessons that I learned from this is that you know, people are brought into our lives, they're like arrows, they're like an arrow and a quiver that we read from that scripture of 127, Psalm 127. And that God brings us sticks, just a shaft. It doesn't have a point, it doesn't have purpose, and it doesn't have direction, which is what the, um, the fletch is for. So today I want to just give you some practical things as leaders. What are you doing in your life today that will empower and encourage those leaders who are coming through to actually find a point or a purpose for their life and also direction for where they need to go. So I want to just leave you some things that I pray will be encouraging to you. Because there are people in your, in your church, there are people in your leadership group who you know who have great potential in God but you're thinking, how can you bring them through practically? How can you bring them through in a way that will give them the, the actual environment they can flourish in? Well, arrows are beautiful things. And I just want to illustrate some things around the arrow. Because as we look at that scripture, these arrows as they're released into the purpose of God, they do a lot of, they make a lot of impact. And when they make the impact, there's influence and follows that impact. But I want to just encourage you with this, you know, the back part of this arrow you need you need to have a fletcher which is someone who creates the fletch which is this back part of an arrow and also you need a forger someone that's a blacksmith to actually forge the point so you actually have direction so what does a fletch do these are some practical things you know the fletching was a um, aerodynamic way of actually making the sustain um, stable as it flew in the air and that's what arrows that's what happens when people come into our lives as leaders we need to actually keep them stable by providing the fletch in their lives what does that mean that means we as leaders need to be fletchers we need to be people that provide fletch for the back of these arrows because a fletch gives a direction a fletch gives it flight a fletch gives it distance, a fletch gives it stability, and a fletch gives it accuracy. So in this part, as leaders, we need to develop a way to become fletchers to the arrows that God puts into our quiver. So are you going to become a fletcher? Are you going to give direction? Are you going to give flight? That means you just got to let them go and actually allow them to actually be tested. But also, are you going to give them actually an environment where they can flourish are you going to give them stability when it comes to the word of God and are you going to give them accuracy and this is all done when we actually apply and actually become fletchers another part of this is the forger which is the blacksmith that creates the point of the arrow and what does a forger do well the arrow head provides impact the arrow head provides placement and strength the arrow, arrowhead provides purpose and the arrowhead provides the form to allow the flight to take place. So as leaders, I want to encourage you today with this word that you need to become fletchers and forgers for someone's call in their life. Whatever leaders that God brings into your life, you need to actually take them as a stick and give them a fletch, and give them direction. And give them a point, a purpose, so you can actually see them flourish as they fly into everything God has for them. This is important. I'm looking at my sons and I'm saying, God, help me to fletch their life. Help me to forge their life using your word, using uh, people around them, using uh, events, using strategy, Lord God. Give me the plan so I can help them find their purpose and find their place. 
So in your leadership teams, I want to encourage you with just uh, some quick thoughts and some quick challenges. No, God's going to give you arrows. God has given you arrows, but they're just sitting in the quiver, not being used. The best way an arrow can be used is if it's released. And this is a season that we need to release arrows. Because the impact they will have on the world will be impact for a city, an impact for the church, an impact that will leave a legacy. And that's what we want to try and do with the arrows that God has given us, leaders that God has given us. Even in yourself, you're probably feeling that as a leader, what are you doing to release yourself from any expectations so you can fly further, so you can reach your God potential. And an important thing is that you need to come back to that whole thing of God, allow me to actually work on my flesh and help me to work on my, the forge and actually work on the tip and find purpose again Lord God so I can be directed to what you have called me to there's uh, five things I just want to leave with you before we move on to the, the questions I want to challenge you with and the five things are this you need to be consistent as a leader be consistent people judge you by your example and also by your excuses so if you make the excuses people are going to look at that and take it as an example so please lead by example number two be passionate be the most passionate person in the room when there's times of worship be the passion most passionate worshiper in the room you got to lead by example if you're wondering why people are not as passionate as you because you're not as passionate as what you should be so lead by example be the first one there be the last one to leave but be passionate on the floor be passionate as you stand be passionate as you sit be passionate in everything God has given you just be passionate because it's important that we do that because people look at you for an example stay sharp over this lockdown or this isolation period have you been staying sharp or have you used have you let the 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 circumstances of what's going on around the world blunt you and your point and your purpose stay sharp number four keep growing we need to keep growing as leaders keep on learning keep on discovering keep on enjoying those adventures and also number five be faithful be faithful to what God has given you be faithful to where God has placed you as a leader God has placed you in the quiver for a season and then one day the great archer named Jesus will release you into your purpose but you need to be faithful in the quiver for the season that God has placed you there for because trust me as you're being fletched by the leaders as you're being forged by the leaders your God's getting you ready because as he releases you out of that quiver to send you into your God purpose you will make an impact but be faithless you know stay true to the purpose of God there's a point to your life and as God releases you from the quiver into the next season I want to encourage you to actually make an impact where God sends you so friends I pray this word has been encouraging to you. let's pray as we close off Father, I just want to thank you for the, the word, Lord God. I want to thank you that you're releasing arrows into this next season. And I pray as leaders that we would see the potential in other leaders and even in ourselves for the next season. And we would release those leaders into whatever they're called to, Lord God. We honor you today in Jesus' name. I pray that that's a, a, a word that would encourage you. And... Uh, Hopefully, once, once again, we can meet up face to face. But I pray that even in this next season, that you start releasing those arrows into where God has for you. God bless you. Take care. Kakiteano. Cheers. See you later.